Reinforcement means the change is reinforced within each individual. Like I mentioned, the three purpose of attending this kind of um, comic program, I said number one, to um, remind us what we have forgotten, number two, to reinforce the things we are doing currently, and number three, to make these discoveries. So reinforcement is a part of change. Now, what are barriers to change? What are barriers to change? What are barriers to change? Barriers to change one, or what we say, why do people resist change? This is what we have here. Maybe we can pause here and um, can you think of some, can you think of um, others? Maybe later we can um, apply for it. And look at them together. Can look at them together. If you have, you can, you can share them. So barriers to change. The status quo provides a support zone. So many of us will never be billionaires until we lose our nine to five jobs. Our 30 days make one pay jobs. We have great ideas. We have great visions. We have great um, uh, projects that we want to embark on. But because we're in our comfort zone, we never want to make that change. We never want to make that change. Because the status quo provides a certain comfort zone. And then, of course, the need for stability. Stability means that at least you know that where you are is sufficient. It's okay. You are very happy where you are. You are not expecting any negative, uh, whatever. Then the need for predictability. You want to know that when you get, uh, you, you, I mean, at least you meet whatever you want. And then when you're at work, you know how things are going to be. This is what they are saying. You want to go into, uh, you want to buy a new software that's uh, HR software. Uh, don't know, you know? You can imagine when the federal government wanted to introduce the uh, a payroll software to capture, uh, uh, I think, civil servants and all that. There was a lot of resistance, you know, everywhere. And the resistance, some of them are well-founded, you know, because people are not aware how well is this software? How is it going to be manipulated? Is it, is it, is it necessary? Is it risky? You know, so many things. There was also the issue of suspicion. So people resist for that. The need for predictability, the need for stability, and then the comfort zone, and then the fear of the unknown. So please write down others. Write down others. Okay, um, I cannot see the screen again. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm, I'm working on it. Okay, yeah, okay. I can hear you. Okay, you can go on now. All right. I can hear you. Okay, so that we can see it on our screen. Can we see it on our screen? A model of employee decision to actively resist an organizational change effort. This is just a simple model. Uh, model. Uh, you can see, you know, um, the discovery of or new information about the change effort. The employee realized that uh, something new is happening. And then the person has discovered it. So that's the first step you can see here. And then there's emotional reaction to the change effort. The emotional reaction may be that we don't want this, or we are okay with it, or it could be anger, it could be sadness, it could be disappointment. Then it could be uh, unhappiness. And then he takes the decision to resist the organization change effort. So he puts up a resistant behavior. This resistant behavior can manifest in various ways. Okay, it could be that he becomes um, taciturn, reluctant, uncooperative. He can probably, if it's a unionized organization, he might want to, you know, he puts up a resistant behavior. You know, let's just waste much time on that. And then 
uh, you, you you have other areas. You have look at this. You have uh, under emotional reaction to change effort. You have attributional attributional appraisal, then informational cues relating to the change efforts begins with information. Then it looks at the environment. Then at the decision to resist the organization uh, change effort, is assessment of the impact of resistance, assessment of effort required to resist. Assessment of the risk involved. Should we resist? Should we, you know, what are the risks involved in resistance? Then, uh, own skill and abilities. Am I important enough? If I resist this, can I succeed? And then, own confidence and competence. So, all these come together before the <coughs> change um, successfully resisted, before the change can be successfully resisted. Then, I want to quickly look at tools to facilitate change. Uh, we've talked about the ADCA uh, process, the five level process of ADCA awareness, desire, knowledge, ability, and reinforcement. Then we're looking at for organizational tools to facilitate change. How do you manage complex change? Uh, the first field analysis and then consensus building. And I think we'll close, we'll close from after this, we'll close. So managing complex change means that you may have to map, like you map the resistance now. You map the resistance now, looking at the emotional crisis of the employee. Then the, 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 there are characteristics, there are uh, employees that are very, there are some that are very reasonable. There are some that are very difficult. There's a book, you can look for it, it's called The Troublesome Professional. Very interesting book, you know? Um, it, it, it's not as if uh, that, <laughs> it's not a negative aspect of the uh, profession anyway, it's a positive aspect, but it means that this person will always want to do the right thing, okay? So, so you look at that, then the, the complex change, means that it overlaps between the individual, the group, the organization, and even into the society. And then it also means that uh, when we say change is if it's a simple change is a change that is unidirectional. <clears throat> but you have changes that are maybe three or four things, or at least two things that happen at once, okay? Like uh, on a mundane level, on our day-to-day -day life, when a, a lady is getting married, but she's pregnant before the marriage, that's a complex change, okay? So you can, you can mix it up. In an organization where you can say, okay, you want to expand as well as grow. You want to add more uh, products, and yet you, you also want to increase your branches. That's a kind of a change as well. And then when you bring in the issue of customer uh, increase, in, increase in customer size again, that's another complex change. But a simple change is when you have just made one goal or two and you, are, you, you have an idea of how that can be achieved. So let's look at the, uh, the critical components. First, you must have your vision. Like I said, the most important thing about change management is what? I said purpose. And that's why you start with your vision. Vision means what you want to arrive at, what you want to transform into, what you want to change into. I have already defined change as a state of transition between where we are and where we desire to be. In terms of attributes, in terms of resources, in terms of our, our component being, our state of being. So strategic planning means eagle eye planning, where you look at a vision of the future. I stated that long term is from zero months to at least two years, that's short term. And then mid term is from two years. So let's say, uh, some people will say five years, but I prefer to look at mid-term like um, 
10 years. And then long term is minimum 10 years to 100 years. Because one of the biggest problems that we have in Africa is that um, our long term is about like five years. You know, we, and that's why people do business and then it collapses. People do business and it collapses because the, the kind of terms that we're looking at is different from the ground. So strategic planning looks at the um, broader view, the bigger vision of where you went to arrive. So that, 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 that means you need to hold, you need to clarify your vision. You must, you must clarify your vision to that point where you can simplify it. You can simplify it and explain. If you can't explain your vision in five minutes, that means the vision has a If you are telling me your vision and I cannot understand within five minutes, it, it means there's a problem with that vision. It should, it should be so simple and definite. When you are setting smart objectives, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic time phase, the same thing with your vision. Your vision should be so clear that you can be able to convince people, join me on this journey. Let's make it happen. So then you need to gather the, you need to have the ammunition, the arsenal, the skills that you require. Then I talked about incentive, motivation, resources. Then you need to have action plan. Action plan. Very, very important. You need to have action plan. Okay? So, that's for the management of um, complex change. Let's, let's go on. We have talked about the critical components. So, look at... <laughs> so, look at how many visions you have. Complex change. Vision one. Eh? You have this, you have this, you have this. And then all of them banded together. Look at how it flows. Skills, incentive, resources, action plan, change. But look at, at the lower part. Vision, skills, incentive, resources, but no action plan. You see, if there's no action, action plan, it will result to what? False start. Look at this one again. Vision plus skills plus incentive plus what? You have the vision, you have the skills, you have incentive, but no resources. You have action plan. You'll be what? If there are no resources, you'll be frustrated. It will lead to frustration. Look at this one. There's vision, there's incentive, there's resources, there's action plan, but there is no skill. What does it do? Gives you anxiety. Okay? Look at this one. You have no vision, you have skills, you have incentive, you have resources. You have action plan, but no vision. What would you do? You have confusion. That's what some organizations are experiencing today. You know, some organizations are experiencing this kind of <laughs> situation today. No vision, but there is skill. Like Nigeria, Nigeria, we have skills. We have incentive. We have resources. We have action plan. I think we even have vision. But I think our vision is not easy to explain. You know, like I said, if you can explain your vision to me in the next five minutes, let me understand, let me know what do you want to achieve. It will lead to confusion. So look at the first one. Can you see that vision plus skills plus incentive plus resources plus action plan equals to change. If this is one of the few takeaways you can have in this workshop, you have succeeded. If you can just put it in your hand, manual of change, I need to have vision. I need to have skills or confidence. Instead of skills, you can say competencies. I need to have incentives. I need to have resources. I need to have action plan. You know, the five uh, components are there. The critical components are there. If you can put it in your mind, and every time you think about change, remember vision, 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 skills, or competencies, competencies. Remember, competencies includes your ability, your skills, and all that. Competencies, competencies, incentives. That's motivation and discipline that I talked about. Incentives, incentives. Incentives. You have carried out your SWOT analysis. You already know what your weakness are in your own, within your own country of influence. Your opportunities and threats are outside. But you know, you now know how to deal with it. You now the ammunition you have to deal with your um, 
opportunities and threats is between is within your strengths and weaknesses. So it means that you need to freeze your strength and reduce your weaknesses. It's a lot of hard work. That's why I said, you know, remember when I talked about the nugget, I said a lot of us need, we want the improvement, but the sacrifice required for that change. So if this are, if this this page alone is something you can put in your head as a template, then this workshop, we are, we are, we are, we are happy about it. Okay? So then uh, we look at uh, force analysis. Force field analysis um, is also uh, very critical to um, change management. Um, it was the uh, in the 1990s that gave us of um, first speed and I more research on it. That's where we're professionals. And um, he was a push and pull factor, restraining forces and um, driving forces. Okay? So you have the desired change. Under first speed analysis, you have the critical movement, you have the desired change. Okay, you have the driving forces favoring, favoring the change. You have the restraining forces resisting the change. And then you have the equilibrium or current status. So your force field analysis uh, enables you to carry out a sort, a sort of sort SF analysis. Okay, what are the forces? Look at this uh, diagram, for instance, you can see. So these are the driving forces, these are the restraining forces. Okay, so you can see. So uh, it means that uh, you, you can you can you can parameters. You know, when you have these arrows, you can list parameters. What are the driving forces? You have enough money. You have the time. You have you have a good. Coach. What are the restraining forces? There's um, emergency. There's insecurity. Um, there's inflation. Uh, economic policy, you know, you can list. I'm just giving it, we're not uh, making any, you know, you can, can, you can do that. So, first, very important, uh, because it can help you to, um, have an idea of whether you can over, overcome the equilibrium and move the change. Then, the third one, you know, I gave you three. I think the, 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 the first one is complex uh, change management. Second one, first with analysis, and then this is the third one, um, building consensus. What is um, consensus? Consensus is like a, a democratic dispensation where we're able to ensure that people um, of different uh, inclination are, are brought to the round table and um, they, they reach an agreement. So you, you have a group decision making progress. Everyone's opinion is encouraged and valued. Like when you want to brainstorm, what's the first thing you do when you want to brainstorm? When you want to brainstorm, you know, to generate lots and lots of ideas, either from yourself, one person brainstorming, that only you can sit down and brainstorm. Or you can call maybe your whole department and stop, and you have to be the moderator. And then you sit at the board with your marker, and then your whiteboard is there, and you don't have any idea. Anything that anybody say you write down. Okay. So different opinions and differences are viewed as self spread and injury. Remember, for Professor Depono, wear the six hats. You know, and I put the, the six colors uh, white, black, um, yellow, green, red, and blue. And I told you what each of these colors are going to for the bonus. And I find that that actually is just a way of simplifying whatever we're doing. You know, pretending to be six person, but actually it's like a team. You know, Belvin says a team must contain at least between eight to 10 different types of people, different types of character type for that team to be effective. You must have somebody who is an idealist, is the one that brings up the idea. You must have somebody who motivates. You must have somebody who organizes. You must have somebody who keeps record. You must have somebody who drives people to come together. Somebody who is hardworking, who always says, let's do this. You must have somebody who is a finisher. Otherwise, the team will fail. 
and you must be some you must have somebody who's able to control storms who is, you know who is who is able to negotiate and um, resolve things because there will be there will be storms so all voices are heard and understood before an effort to finalize the decision is made after full discussion those who continue to disagree indicate willingness to experiment for a period of time and then all members share in final decision making that is consensus that's consensus so sometimes you don't have change just uh force <laughs> um, on your throat so you have advantages it can be informal or use formal procedures uh members are more likely to support the decision because you're carrying them along you're making it democratic it can be a win-win situation and then it facilitates open communication and um, actually can make people uh, to speak their mind. You know, instead of gossip and hearsay and stuff like that, it requires uh, members to listen and understand all sides of the issue and stay, set the stage for action. So immediately you have reached a consensus like that, you can say, ma'am, put it on the, on the board. Who does this? What do you want to do in this area? Where, when, how, why? So uh, very critical, very important. Then what are the disadvantages of decision making by consensus? One, there must be trust. Then two, group leaders must use facilitation rather than control. You cannot control. You cannot assert yourself. You cannot coerce. So even if the majority is wrong, you have to follow. Then it takes time. Then you need at least seven for reaching group consensus. That's the magic number. OK? And then sometimes you have very powerful personalities. We all are aware you have powerful personalities, either because a lot of people owe them favors. They have done wonderful things in so many people's life. This one, you did this when you were doing, you did this. And so when he's talking, even if he's totally wrong, you just calm down, then go, hey, you, you know? So those are the uh, disadvantages. So what are the steps in facilitating consensus? One, identify and define problem, situation, or issue. Brainstorm list of alternatives, suspend judgment, do not discuss or reject any ideas. Remember I said it, then review, change, consolidate, be right and set priorities as a group through discussion. Then when you eventually make a decision, please put it down in writing. Otherwise, it's going to go to an argument. You know, everybody forgets, but some people pretend that they don't forget anything at all. So you have to document. So later, review and evaluate results, revise as needed. So how can leaders support the improvement efforts? We're rounding up now. I said, when we round up, I'll give us some tips. So we're rounding up now. So these are just tips. Um, recognize the differences between leadership and management. Because change management is a leadership, uh, uh, leadership um, responsibility, unless you want to be a victim. You want, to, you want change to happen to you rather than be uh, a participant or a, a change supporter, a change champion. So give up the notion of the hero leader. Don't pretend to be the strongest every time, the one that is strong, you know. Develop broad-based leadership. Then encourage individual initiative. Develop a learning organization, okay? So if you want, you must always solve the puzzle. Find the missing piece. Find the missing piece. When you have gathered enough information, how do they all fit together to make a coherent whole? So the relational living model, look at this, self to others to the system. When we talk about change management, you look at self, then you look at others, you look at the system. The system is the framework within which our processes and procedures are functional. The system is a framework within which our processes and procedures, our resources are functional or operational. So 
the four steps to effectively manage change, recognize the changes in the broader business environment, anticipate the change, think about it, okay? So don't, don't sit within the comfort zone. Look out, break the box, shape the box, or think outside the box. So the, recognize changes in the broader business environment just within your own, you know, you can think local, I mean, you can start local, but think global. So develop the necessary adjustment for your company's needs. And then train them, get their buy-in. After you have put forward the vision, get, train them and get their buy-in on their people changes. And then win their support. Win their support. Tips for successful change management. Benefit management and realization to define Measurement stakeholder, measurable stakeholder aims, create a business case for the achievement and monitor assumption risk, dependencies, cost, ROI, these benefits and cultural issues affecting the progress of the associated work. Effective communication that informs various stakeholders of the reasons for the change, the benefits of successful implementation, as well as the details of the change. And then it devises an effective education, training, or skills upgrading scheme for the organization. And then monitor implementation and fine tune as required, as required. Then provide personal counseling to alleviate any change related fears. Counter resistance from the employees of companies and align them to various strategic direction of the organization. Once you have, if you are using, for instance, consensus, and um, you have agreed on the direction to go, then you must counter resistance. Either you must use soft counter methodology or hard counter resistance methodology. That's the truth. So in summary, to be uh, an effective as a change agent, Consider and understand, one, the system or context in which you work. So it's not just that everything you hear, you say, ah, I'm going to become a change uh, agent. You must understand the system. I have defined the system as a framework within which our procedures, processes, and resources are functional or operational. So you must know the system or the context in which you work. You must see your, you must understand yourself as a leader. In other words, you must be proactive, reason. Is this what, what we want to do? How can we make it better? And then what does it take to motivate yourself and others? So, as a conclusion, um, just a minute. I want to just show a short uh, clip. <laughs> I'll show us a short clip and then um, I'll share it as a, just for us to round up um, this session. Um, before we go, I want us to write down some important uh, very important um, uh, nuggets on change management so that at least we can begin to run with it. Uh, it will not just be a theory, theory stuff. It will be, it will be something that uh, you should be able to practicalize. You should be able to practicalize. 
so um, okay i think uh, i'll share the screen now I want to share this was sent to okay. Please just pay attention. If you want to be an eagle, please listen to this. Watch it carefully. It is really food for thoughts. Can we see it? Is everybody seeing it? Yes. Yes, yes please. Yes. 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 The eagle has the longest lifespan of its species. The eagle that we know, the bird, is one of the most powerful birds and one of the strongest birds. Now, it can live up to 70 years. Remember, as different animals without different ages to live on this plane of existence. I think the mosquito probably lives for two years, um, I mean, for two weeks. And it thinks that two weeks, if it lives to its life, to lifetime, it can, it can see it from its own perspective as if, as if it is 200 years. And the same thing with the ego. It can live up to 70 or 75 years. A human being. I, I think that the moderator has 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 an ability to mute everybody. Mute everybody from your end. The distraction is much. It can live up to 70 years. But we reach. Mr. Akorede, you can mute yourself now. You know, so I'm saying present. Because it will disrupt his uh, speech. But uh, we are mature enough. Please, let us be. Do they the need food? Thank you. Very good. So to reach this age, the eagle must make a hard decision. Are you following? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. And in its 40s, when it is getting to 40 years, its long and flexible talons become weak. It can no longer grab prey which serves as food, okay? The eagle begins to feel hungrier and hungrier. Its old age and heavy wings due to their thick feathers become stuck to its chest and make it difficult to fly. Then the eagle is left with only two options. Either a dice, or go through a painful process of change, which lasts 150 days. 150 days is how many months? That's like five months. Approximately five months. The process requires that they go fly to a mountain top on it next. And then gradually, the eagle knocks the beak against a rock until the beak flops out. Then it starts removing its feathers. It will wait for a new beak to grow back and then to pluck out the talons, those, those long nails that the eagle used to grab its prey. Then when the new talons have grown back, the eagle starts plucking its old age feathers. After five months, the eagle takes a famous flight of it can live for 30 more years. 30 more years of achievement of power and strength. And that means that for us as professional managers, for us to survive, you must make a retreat. A time will come in our lives for you 
to become who you want to be, either as an individual or as an organization, you must retreat for some time, use the code of silence. I use it a lot. Sometimes I just lock myself up in the room and I just want to be silent and think and meditate. Sometimes I use it to just show gratitude for God's blessing in my life. Sometimes I use it to read. Sometimes I just stay alone. The more you do this, the more you have better understanding of your strengths, of your weaknesses, and how you can take advantage of your opportunities and how you can mitigate your threats. So, um, I don't want us to, I don't want to take too much of our time. Um, this is the workshop. Um, uh, some of us have uh, journeys to, 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 to make. So I believe that by, by the grace of God, we should be able to utilize some of these points that I have been able to uh, list uh, the world. Hello, am I still on? Hello, hello, sir. Okay. I hope everybody is still hearing me. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yes, sir. I want us to take. We are with you. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. We are with you, sir. We are with you, sir. We are with you, sir. Mm -hmm. And then, under yes, that piece of paper that I mentioned earlier, I want you to write number one request. Request for the change. Request for the change. That's for each change in organization change or for yourself. Who is requesting for the change? Number two, reason. Uh, you can you can uh, you can you can unmute yourself again. I've uh, muted everyone. So, Akarade, you can mute yourself. I've muted everyone due to the background. Okay, so let me let me share uh, the previous screen. Okay, so number one, I said number one, write the request. Number two, write the reason. Number three, write the requirements. Number four, write the resources. Resources. Number five, write the Write the resistance. Number six, write the risk. Number seven, the responsibilities. Number eight, write relationships. Number nine, write the returns. And number 10, write the results. Those are the 10 point journey. 10 point parameters for change in change management. Every time, in addition to the managing the complex change management that I mentioned, the component, each time you want to go through the, the change, whether just a small project or something, or maybe as an individual, um, as list it. What are this one is for you as a leader. So, please, can you come again? So, answer that question. So, our task is to have a. Can I get the last point? The last point I said, one, 
Okay. Thank returns. you. Returns. And then number the last one is results. Please, can you take it again, sir, please? Okay. Thank you. Number one, I said write requests. Number two, reason. Why? That is reason. Why? Then number three, requirements. What are the requirements that you need to facilitate that change of approach? Number four, resources. What are the resources you require? Maybe it's manpower, maybe it's money, maybe, you know. So you need to be able to differentiate or distinguish between requirements and resources. Requirement has to do with control, with what you need to be able to have to do it. Like maybe qualify, qualify, qualifying requirements. And resources means the things, the, the, the uh, maybe equipment. Please, uh, please, can we call that a requirement skills? Yes, it could mean skills and competencies. It could mean um, val valid certifications. You understand? It could mean valid certifications. Then, number five, you have to list the resistance factors. Number six, list the risk. Then, number seven, since you are going ahead, what are the responsibilities to be shared between stakeholders? Then number eight, define the relationships between those stakeholders. You have shared responsibility, then relationship. All of us want this thing to happen, so what do we do? Relationships. In bracket, you can put roles so that it becomes clear. I deliberately chose R so that it will, be, it will stick in our mind. So I, you can use another letter to look for those words, but I chose R because I wanted it to flow. So relationship, and then you bracket put roles of those people involved in the responsibilities. And then the juicy part of it, the returns, and then the results. Returns is, is like short term to mid term, and then the result is the achievement of the purpose, the change itself, the change itself. So uh, I want to stop here and thank you very much for your time in um, listening to me. Um, um, let me, okay, we can still. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. You can stop sharing your screen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Please, you. I hope you can you, get sir. the, the slides on the recording of this. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you for the yeah, presentation. That will be sent to every participant. Pardon? That will be sent across okay. later. We are going to OK. okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. What about the, the account right. teachers for the certificate, sir? Thank you, sir. The message sent thank to you, you sir. sent across. All right. Okay, thank Mr. you, sir. Mr. Obakar, are you on board? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Thank you very much. Kode, for that um, wonderful presentation on effective um, change management. Well, messages has been, have been coming in since um, with respect to the materials, and um, I've also responded to that, just like the registrar have said that it will be sent um, across. But for easy um, access to your information, I've dropped a message there which you can send um, your name and email address via WhatsApp to that number which I've dropped on chat um, handle. Please do make use of that so that um, we can have your email address and send you all the material. And um, with respect to, to the certificate, for those of us who are interested in the certificate, you can as well um, notify while sending the message and uh, pay the sum of 15,000 uh, into the Institute account. 
earlier sent to you or it will also be sent again so that um, you can uh, do that. Thank you very much, um, please, Mr. Sir, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. All right, please, all right. can you come again with the please. WhatsApp number? I can't find it here, all right. please. All right, all right, taking. I'm going to send it on the chat um, handle now, please. Okay. Let's um, check Hello, the chat sir. handle. Hey. Good yes, morning, I can sir. hear you. Hold on, sir, please. Hold on, Hold on please. Oh. I'm coming to right. you, please. All right. Thank you. All right, I've dropped the number once in on the chat um, hand. Please um, kindly utilize it by sending your full name, how you want it to be on your certificate, and your email address for, for the uh, materials. For the materials. Thank you. Mr. Korede, thank you for um, justice to deeper. I know um, there are questions, there are People might uh, have one question or the other with respect to what we you have presented for or outside the paper that has to do with change in entirety that might want to ask or in contributions. We are going to allow for that we like he said in this of uh, his presentation, in entirety, it is um, glaring to us now that change, no matter the saying that we have been hearing all this while, that change is um, inevitable, change is constant, change is this, change is that. Yes, this has a kind of um, broadened our knowledge about um, change entirely. And when it comes with an, um, um, adapt or react um, to it. And um, in the course of his uh, presentation as well, he has um, made us known that it is better for us to always be active rather than being um, reactive when it comes to change. Yes, at times we might not have um, the power over whatever change that is going to come or that we are going to come across. It's either we are prepared to tackle it in order for us to be a beneficiary of um, whatever change that might occur or be a victim. Just like um, the year 2020 that just passed by, as at um, this time last year, the whole world is still uh, standing still, running hectare scatter. Yes, some people utilize the opportunity thereby making their company even become stronger. Why some company fall victims of it till today? And as a result of that, some organization are still suffering from the blow of, um, of um, COVID-19. So as a manager, we are supposed to be up and doing, always putting on our thinking cap. What if this happened? What can we do? Like he says in the course of uh, his presentation, at times if we don't lose our 30 days pay job. We don't even know that um, we have a um, bright idea or we can't even become a millionaire. Because of that comfort zone of after 30 days, a lot enter. We are used to. We are comfortable with that zone we, we are, which we are not ready to change or ready to even think about what can we do differently. So um, I believe you've done um, justice to the paper. And um, before we take a question and um, contribution or any other to um, tell us if he has one or two things to say in addition to what uh, Mr. Ebeza Korede has um, said um, so far. Mr. Registrar, sir. OK, thank you. Mr. Obakar, are you getting me? Yes, sir. OK, thanks so much, sir, Corridi, for the paper well uh, presented. If not for time restraints, I believe you are capable of keeping us here till tomorrow. But thank you. A round of applause for him. <laughs> he has done justice to the team of uh, today's comments on uh, effective uh, change management. Change is constant. 
change thank you very table. much and uh, we cannot uh, uh, avoid it that was why when the present government came up with uh, the change mantra in 19 uh, 2015 many of us uh, decided to queue into the change but what we failed to ask uh, if the change uh, was uh, functional or dysfunctional we did not ask that question. So next time, when somebody is, uh, we should always look at uh, ch uh, functional changes, changes that uh, will make us achieve uh, the super ordinary goals of our organization. So I'm not going to make another presentation, but I would like to uh, at least touch on one or two key points. We all know that change uh, management is a structured approach to implementing change in an organization. It recognizes that change can be a painful process which can have a far-reaching impact on the organization and the people who work for it. There are four key principles of change management. The first principle is to understand the change. Understand the change. Is the change a functional one or dysfunctional? So you must understand the change. For change to be effective, you need to understand all the ins and the outs of the change. For instance, what it is, how it will be achieved, and then why it needs to happen. You must understand that. If you don't uh, understand what you are changing, then uh, you are in trouble. Then the second key point is uh, you plan the change. Remember when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. When you fail to plan, you stink. And when you stink, you sink. This can include uh, achieving high level sponsorship of the change project, as well as identifying wider involvement and buy-ins opportunities. Remember the presenter, uh, Sakoride told us about the SWOT analysis earlier. So you must understand the strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. The third uh, key point is implement uh, change. Remember, he told us without action, then uh, whatever you have on board, then uh, it leads to confusion. So you must be ready to take action, implement change. When you come to carry out your plan, you need to ensure that- We can't hear, maybe you should repeat it, sir. Thank you. We need to, uh, everyone involved knows uh, what they are doing. This may encompass addressing the training needs, appointing change agents, providing support for people across the organization, and setting specific success criteria. Then the last uh, principle we you have to look into is for you to communicate the change. Communicate in the language that you understood. Don't use an ambiguous language. Communicate, the, communicate change. Everyone needs to know why the change is happening? Why is the change happening? You need to tell everyone to know why you are changing the system. Feel positive about it and understand how they can achieve uh, success. I believe Sorry, at the three. end of, uh, now that uh, you have done justice to the team of today's uh, presentation, we can go home as a better manager in uh, managing change, in changing the change. Please repeat number three, sir, Sorry, doctor. Thank you. Well presented. And uh, in the Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators, we know that uh, times are very hard at the moment. So we can see that uh, the cost of uh, things in the market, most uh, parents now can only pay school fees and uh, look for what to eat. So that is why we are not ready to overburden add the addition, uh, additional burden to the ones uh, you are carrying. So in this period, we have decided to at least be creative and innovative bringing new things that uh, will make us to be more relevant without uh, stressing ourselves. So like after this uh, presentation now, by next week, we have already pushed another presentation out. The notification is already out there on uh, effective time management. The other time we did that, uh, uh, the, the presentation, uh, we did the, that program, we were only few, about 30 or 40, out of uh, close to over 8,000 people that uh, we are in attendance. So right now we've decided to bring that on board again. 
so that our members who could not uh, afford to come that time could uh, at least uh, be able to attend this one. Because uh, as a professional manager, it's good for you to be a time uh, manager, be an effective time manager. We have equal amount of time, which is the 24 hours, yet we all complain of no time. So in that presentation, and if you have not registered yet, you can uh, as well go ahead and do that. And I understand uh, also that most of our members don't know how to log uh, through the Zoom uh, this app because uh, out, we, are, we expected over 900 people, but uh, the messages sent to my phone, see, uh, my phone here, is not something that I, I could uh, start attending to when the course was already uh, going on. So because like over five to 600 people complained that they could not join the link and they could not join this and that. So it's good that uh, we will also educate ourselves before the next meeting so that uh, those, uh, it's not every time you get the link. What you do is that uh, once you, are, you have uh, registered uh, on the app, then you look for the uh, identification and the passcode to join just the way you people have done now. So it is a good one. And uh, we want everyone want to participate. Those that have not done, uh, attended that uh, change management uh, program before, to do the needful this time so that uh, the work can uh, be a better place because uh, we are going to do a lot of things before the year runs out. Then and, uh, I believe that uh, the sky will be our starting point, not our limit. Thanks so much again the, to the presenter. We are very grateful to have you on board, sir. Thank you. Please, when is it? When is when is that one coming up, sir? Next weekend, sir. The information is already out. You can go to the IPMA page on uh, okay. the IFMA page, on, uh, on the group page on the Facebook is there. It is also okay. there on uh, the other, this thing. And those of you on Telegram uh, app, you get it. And now make sure I also send it, like the way I sent the WhatsApp, uh, bulk, uh, bulk WhatsApp messages. I so thought WhatsApp, so what? The one that the information too. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yeah. my phone. My Ms. Good afternoon, please. Uh, I just have uh, a little bit of a uh, question to ask okay, uh, Like me, you, I you want to ask the presenter? I came in late. No, no, no. Even you two can help me. Uh, help okay, to, that uh, should be uh, my own be the, the voice is familiar. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. Good morning. Well, I mean, good afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, please, uh, I came in late into the meeting. I would like to ask if it's possible to have the material in our email box. Yes, yes, yes. It yes. will be sent across. Abu, I mean, the moderator has given out a number already for you to at least uh, send uh, your, your name and your email for him to send. And uh, I will also do that generally to all the uh, this thing, uh, the numbers uh, I have been sending, uh, sending messages to. So we'll do that. Okay, uh, sir. Everyone will it is it. Modibo, sir. Yes, it's Modibo. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. Thank well done, you. sir. Well, sir, Thank well done. You. I joined late, sir. Okay. But at the same time, yeah, it was well presented. Yes, ma'am. And it's you. timely. Thank yes, you. but I want to ask this question. Sir. Thank you very much for organizing this kind of yes, training. Yes, ma'am. I want to ask a question. You know, the last one on effective management we attended and a certificate was presented to us. Yes, ma'am. So I don't know the difference between that one and this one. Should we no. still go for this certificate for uh, you present? Uh, this time, I will not be the one to present it. It will be another lecturer in a different uh, dimension. <laughs> uh, so effective time management, effective. So we should have two certificates. No, no, no. You not be certificated on that again. You can just at least gain the knowledge. All right. Yes, thank you very much. For you, so, you are welcome you to so join us as a, as a co-presenter this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. No problem. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Someone right. already has certificates yes, in another lecture. Can the person get certificates for this one again? And like this one now, you'll be certificated. We send the Hello, message sir. across for those that are interested. So okay. you, at least the number given to you, you send a message to that number. The moderator will address that issue, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. You, um, sir. Sir, uh, sir, I have a question. On the right. key points, on the key points you highlighted, only get the first one, understanding change, yeah. then plan the change, yeah. then the third one, you didn't get it, change. then your line was... Implement, that is the okay. action plan. Yeah. 
All right, thank you very much. According to made us understood that uh, once you have the knowledge, you have the skill, you have the competency, and if without action, then uh, with, uh, once you once you take action, it will, you will be successful. Then, but without action, it will lead to frustration. Hello. Okay. Sir. Good afternoon. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Sir. This is the. Uh, uh, Dr. Manu on the line. Okay, sir. Thank Although you, sir. Uh, I joined pretty late again, but okay. uh, I still, I, I don't know if Dr. No, okay. Is still there? Uh, he's, he's here with us. Yes, okay, okay. I, I want to ask him uh, uh, a few, I mean, one one question. Okay, sir. And the question goes thus. Uh, he talked about SWOT analysis. Now, I did research, at least this um, Harvard research, and I kind of know that uh, SWOT analysis um, is done to, you operate it on two levels. One for the, one for the, for private sector, then the second one for the public sector. That SWOT analysis, the SWOT itself, it's mainly for the private sector. Then when you are in the government sector, it is the way, is the way around. That is there. You start from D, Z, uh, D then, um, then the O, then go to S. So you come from, from behind. You understand? So I want to uh, ask us that. Oh, sorry. Uh, if, yeah. If we agree uh, with uh, that uh, uh, respect and that uh, Hello, the, new, the new order, so that's just my question to him. Sorry, what's the last part of your question? The phone, okay. rang, the phone somebody's phone was ringing. I didn't, I didn't hear that. Okay, okay. Should, should I repeat it? Yes, so the last part when the that uh, I just I just want to, want to agree with it. That's the difference that you operate SWOT, that you operate SWOT for no, no, the, the, private, the private sector, then you go you operate the, the other way around as the C uh O W S for the public sector to understand. So it's different. What do you call the second one? T O W S. T O W S, yes, but there is no time. I would have explained it deeply as I the research I got from um, Harvard uh, from Harvard the uh, bulletin. So I want to ask you, do you agree with it or what's your own opinion? Yes, I I can agree with it because you know uh, knowledge, like I said uh, earlier, that is one of the reasons why we must continue to interact. Um, okay. We learn from each other. It will be it will be wonderful in a forum like this, and uh, you also add to my knowledge. I, you know, I, I did the, a lot of research and then I, I make presentation and then you, you add to it. It makes our work better. So, um, it's wonderful. I, I know that you can use uh, SWOT, but in some context, you, you can use SS. After having, you can, you can take what we call a SWOT. So you can use it as an individual, you can use it as a group, and you can use it for business. Uh, okay. So this is well, you're using it for business now, and uh, maybe uh, no, uh, yeah. so, I think it's, it's, it's uh, right here, so. about the microphone. Huh? The discussion. Uh, the or maybe you, you can mute. Okay, I, I, can you hear me now? Sorry, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, clearly, you can hear clearly now. Okay, good. So, uh, we can hear you now. Uh, 
for online programs join from there to give and the uh, like I was saying, um, I agree to a large extent because you can unmute it now. I can't see why our people are not understanding this uh, issue. Yeah. Okay, sir. Hello, sir. Okay. You can Hello. Hello, Augusta. We can hear you. Yeah, I'm talking to Hello, the presenter. Gaza. Let him unmute. Hello, sir. Okay, very good. I've unmuted. Okay, sir. Okay. 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 So, after in because of um, contributions from various uh, quarters, various continents, the our own responsibility is to keep waiting, keep analyzing. Not even take for it because my job is to ensure that we take this whatever we're discussing, our training, out of the theory, uh, in mode of practice. You know, it's one of the things that have made businesses become some universities will be very famous that even though universities are known for theories, those theories are like seeds. They are like seeds. For instance, our university, MIT, here we have great universities, you know, all over the country, where a lot of ideas uh, have been better. But as part of chain management, our own advocacy, our advocacy is that it shouldn't be in this pop in the realm of um, just join up, you know. It should it should be something that we can begin to put into practice, you know. Like I It seems we can't hear you again. Mr. Corede, please check your microphone. Mm. So this was, it takes serious um, it takes serious honesty for your SWOT analysis to be to be, to be acceptable. For organization, if you are honest, it can work. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You can create a matrix for it. Okay, so I think further research needs to be done on, on, on that so that we can also take further advantage because uh, as a process consultant, as an improvement consultant, I feel that our job as a professional is to ensure that whatever we are talking about should be practicable and deployable is something that we can deploy and work. But the good thing is that um, the happy thing is living above the fear of failure. Whatever you do, whatever you choose to do, just have it in mind that you are going to eventually prove to be effective. Even when you have prior to that several times and that should give you hope because you now know that okay failure is part of the journey failure is part of the process and in change management just like the ego takes a lot of sacrifice there's the element of anxiety the element of self depreciation the element of self analysis there's introspection and finally, you emerge as you know what you desire to to, to be. I think that that was what um, the Atka model was trying to achieve, focusing more on the individuals rather than focusing on uh, groups and businesses. 
Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, thank uh, you. Mr. Akorode, uh, thank you very much. We appreciate your, the opportunity to, thank you, to sir. listen to your Do we have any? I have a question. Okay, okay go I, ahead. I have actually shared it on right, the chat, but uh, it was not uh, seen. So my first question on the was platform. that, yes, and my first question was that, um, who drives the change management in an organization? Is it the uh, CEO Star or MD or the HR department? Then second question is that, um, any change management policy available, or is it in, is it need for change management policy in, the, in an organization to set a kind of template uh, uh, in the organization for it to be used as a way of measuring how the change is going to take place and the processes and all that? Is there any need for a policy to be uh, drafted for that? Then uh, is there any policy template also you have? Thank you. Thank you. Let me start from the question. Prior to this um, time, we, we used to have strategic management um, uh, practice, or what we look as um, a purpose driven leadership style that tries to give us one max. I want to go, but uh, I think it was mainly it's more or less like captured in our vision and mission statement, our uh, practical philosophy, and then we have different policies, but we don't have change management policy. However, um, if Okay, we'll just contact briefly. Okay, so I said prior to this time, we, we, we don't, companies usually don't have uh, strategic or maybe change management policies. But what they do have is a vision, a new statement, a vision statement. You can have core values. You can have plans, strategic plans. Now, as part of your strategic planning, okay, you can have operational. Are we still together? I'm seeing something on the screen. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid that. Sir. I'm trying okay. to avoid that. So have... Okay. As part of our operation, our strategic operational planning. We can incorporate change management as part of our strategic operation plan. And you know, the strategic operation planning is, is proactive. It tries to envisage our need for growth, our need for um, our need for enlargement, for diversification, both lateral and horizontal growth whether we're increasing the number of our products, which is lateral, or whether we're increasing our reach, which is horizontal. So I don't know, maybe as professional managers now, we can begin to do more research as how our policy formulation, uh, our policy formulation um, sets, include quality policy, safety policy, training policy, um, maybe, uh, human relations policy and all that can incorporate change management. I don't know, but maybe at least now we've talked about it. It's now in the open. We can we can bring in in the policy is defined as a commitment in writing by authorized persons of an organization or of a group. A policy is a commitment, a documentation of a commitment for a specific purpose. So if you now want to say, okay, change my, for instance, I, I don't think Google has a change management policy. I don't think uh, SpaceX, uh, Space, Perspectives, uh, Space Perspectives, and so many other companies, you know, that are supposed to be best uh, global organizations have that. But because their purpose, like I said earlier, that change management, the most important thing is the purpose. And that's why 
you must always stand with vision. And the vision must be so clear. I said, if you can't, if your vision can, you can't, you can't explain it to the person within five and the person grabs it. That means your vision is too complicated. It, it, it's not something, because the vision is something that you are running with. It should be simple to access, to perceive, understand. Okay, so I, I want to leave that in the realm of um, speculation. Maybe we will continue to deliberate about it as a professional institute. Then number two, you said, who drives our change management, whether it's the chief executive officer of the organization or whether it's the uh, uh, human resource department? Well, in terms of strategy, is the chief executive officer. In terms of strategy, the chief executive officer now for us you or for us the, the, the HR Where champion. You? you know, in change management, you need people who will get who who will fly with your ball, who who will run the race with you. You need promoters, you need champions. Okay, you need you need support. So the HR must buy into the vision. Of course, if you want to have a, 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 a welfare for a human resource policy, for instance, somebody is sharing um, their screen. It's not aware. Please, if you're sharing your screen, please check. Or maybe we talk to sharing off from the moderator. Moderator, please. Yeah. Okay, okay. let me do that. Uh -huh. Very good. So mm -hmm. you, you you need to you just give that support. However, formidable, and you buy into the vision of mm -hmm. the organization. The HR can mm -hmm. bring up change mm -hmm. management, can change management, catalyze, can initiate things that will drive the organization's success. Even though HR is subordinate to the blue margin director, but you know the MD or the CEO must give his uh, approval, either overtly or tacitly, to any change. He must get he must get the buy in. So sometimes because it, this is very important, the Zoom we're using today. Do you remember how Zoom came about? Zoom, this Zoom that we're using. The guy who started who started Zoom is a Chinese immigrant that came to work with uh, Cisco World. And he made some he made some uh, observations. He made some observations and um, he said I can do this. This was in around 2009, 2008 or nine or so. And then he, 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 he was turned down. And unfortunately, uh, eventually he left as a leader. He was a manager of the problem, but he wanted certain modification because he was getting complaints. Compla and then they didn't accept it. And so he left. And then he created Zoom. So, Today, Zoom started in 2011. Zoom started in 2011. And everybody today is enjoying it. So sometimes HR can lead the change management process. But you need to be able to get the buying of the chief executive. It's very important. I'll give you another example again. Blackberry. Uh, the, the founder of BlackBerry, his name is, um, uh, his name is Michael Lazaridos. Hello, please, I cannot, I, I cannot you. hear the voice. Please, I cannot hear, hear the voice. Now? I'm hearing you, but I cannot hear the voice. I'm hearing you now. Okay, I hear you now. So, I just gave you an example of what happened to Eric Yuan, the founder of Zoom, the Zoom we're using now. I, I just gave a brief background about him, you know? So I'm trying to paint a picture that you, you need both of them to work together for the change management to work. Eric Yuan made suggestions to Cisco Webex, where he was working. 
he learned so much there, but and then he, he I've, I haven't seen that he's doing so well in this. No. He, he suggested some things. Maybe we will not have had Zoom today, but they didn't accept it, and so he left and started in 2011. He created Zoom. Zoom is ten years this year. It was nine years last year. It has suffered for the past seven years. It didn't really make uh, the impact, but just within one year. It, it broke the billion dollar mark. So that's just by the way. Then I was also going to give you an example, an case study of Berry. I said the founder of Blackberry, his name is Michael Lazar Lazaridos. You know, I'm not too familiar with the name, but you can maybe do more research. But what I want to point out is that why did the Blackberry go down all of a sudden? It was probably the best phone ever manufactured. Up to today, if you go online, if you go on YouTube and all that, you see, discover that the high prices has not stopped. But BlackBerry made some mistakes. And some company executives, HR and all that, were talking to Michael Lazaridos. This is, this is what the people are saying. They wrote it. The first thing they told him is that, Sir, Put a browser in his phone. Are we together? Put a browser in this phone. This phone is too beautiful, but it has just email capability because Lazari does this design Blackberry as a phone for email. So if you if you can cast your mind, Blackberry came out. Uh, those of us, some of us who were able to afford it then. It was like the first time we could actually receive emails and all that. It, it was for, configured for email. It was later that he put a browser on it. But at that time, iPhone had, had, had started and started taking the market. But we had between 50 to 70% of uh, uh, luxury phone market. Then they lost it. So many issues. I think they listed about three or four issues. So change management. Change management can be driven from the top. It can be driven from the middle. Sometimes it can even be driven from the bottom up. But there must be a meeting point. That's why I mentioned those three uh, issues, the force feed analysis, the complex uh, change management process, and the consensus management. So with that together, we can give, like the acronym team will say together everyone, everyone of us achieves together, everyone achieves more. So I want to stop here. Thank you. Thank, thanks so much, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir, for that um, great clarification. I want to believe that um, we have taken all the questions or suggestions and um, contributions. But if there is any, quickly let us know before we round uh, draw the curtain on the panel. All right. So I want to believe um, we have um, done justice to all the observation, questions, and um, suggestions raised for about um, change management, about change management. Like I said earlier on, there was a number posted on the chat handle because I can still see some persons um, dropping their email on the chat um, handle of the Zoom platform. It will be difficult for us to hear yeah, because as messages are trooping in, they are all um, going. So please, if you know you are sending your, your drop your name on the Zoom chat um, handle without sending it to either as a message or WhatsApp message, on the number I drew earlier, um, take the number once again. You are to send your name and email address and notify if you want um, the certificate for the for the uh, workshop. The number once again is um, 081-69-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-5-
the fee is um, 15,000 Naira only as um, directed by the registrar. So on that note, I want to believe that um, we are already at the concluding part of um, this program. Let's endeavor to work. Somebody wants to say something? Yes, I have yes, sir. Apple wants to be the number. The right. number. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right, go ahead, madam. Okay, thank you very much. Please, I want to ask the 15,000 Naira, is it for each workshop? Because the upcoming one is what I'm interested in. Is it for each of them or just it will cover all the workshops on this platform? Not, not all the different? workshop, ma. Okay, just not for... all the workshop. The 15,000 Naira is for each. That is for certificates and logistics. Okay, okay. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, if you are interested in having the certificate for it. Well, um, on that note, I want to urge us all to work with um, whatever it is that um, we discussed here today. It was um, a great um, discussion, all true. And you agree with me that uh, Mr. Ebenezer Korede has been able to impact so much on, on um, the paper he presented on effective um, change uh, management. And as soon as the material is um, sent to us, we can also study it at our um, leisure time because he has made it um, a very straightforward um, point whereby we can um, at our own leisure time um, assimilate. So on that note, we have um, come to the end of the program, but before we take the closing prayer, Mr. Registrar, sir, do you still have anything to say? No, no, no. All right, thank you, sir. Yes, Once sir. again, the number is... Mr. Obaka. Mr. Sir. Okay, just that uh, we are interested in members introducing more people to the institute so that we can uh, reach our target uh, within a short uh, frame. Please, hello, please, can you dictate the number again so that we can put it down and get across to you, okay. please? Okay, okay. The number once again is 081. 081 thank you very much yes Doctor. that's the number and um as the register I have said the institute is in need of um, members. We, as a member of the institute, are supposed to be a, an ambassador of the institute. Thereby, we have to work hand in hand in order to introduce the uh, members, in as much as the institute is in, uh, in our own part, in order to facilitate. Yes, Sorry, another question, Mr. Facilitator, please. Hello. 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 Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, sir. I want to sincerely appreciate you for this great opportunity given to some of us that we are very new on this uh, platform and uh, this program. As for me, this is my second time. Chief Drive, I'm as members that member. within the shortest period. Hello. Hello, please go ahead, I'm listening. Okay. I'm not a registered member, that is one, but I've got familiar in attending your program on Zoom. So I want to know how to be a full-fledged member, one, and how to go about it. And number two, you'll be talking about administrator, administrator, administrative, yes, it's good, but you do make me sure more than my uh, companies, because as I am, I'm from, I'm from a institution. I work in institution, I institution of learning. So how do I combine this together? Because I know this will go a long way in assisting me as an administrator. But you do make mention uh, much of my company than institution than what I'm expecting. So I want to ask. I want to. I want to ask for this clarification. Uh, management something, but I want to know the actual that can it be useful for me more 
in my place of work. All right, thank you very much. Um, welcome to the Institute. Um, I will just speak briefly and then I will invite the registrar to, uh, to answer your question. The second okay, part of sir. your question is whether you coming from the institution, whether IPMA yes. is relevant to you. And, uh, relevant. Yeah, the answer is yes. Um, IPMA is open to all professions. It is open to all professions. We don't discriminate. Okay. It includes um, medical fields, legal, because it's is an institute for professional managers. And you need professional managers in every field, whether finance, medical, engineering, sure. architecture, or academia. Sure. So it's very, sure. very, very important. So it can help. And then number two is the fact that you have the ability to network. Um, we, the, the IPMA platforms are on, they are on Telegram, they are on WhatsApp, they are on uh, Facebook, they are on YouTube. You know, yes, I can see it. I can see it. By yes. the time everything is okay, we will hold annual conferences, we hold uh, seminars and workshops, and you know, you meet people who can cross fertilize ideas and um, learn from ourselves. And sometimes we can even bring businesses uh, together. Okay. So, with this information flow, you know, sometimes you see on the platform, people need uh, people they have vacancies for social, and then they post it on the platform. That's information flow. So, yes. from the yeah. okay. that you, 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 you are working on them, you might be able to even uh, get information on other institutions. Because I know. Okay. You know, they can give you free friends that oh, this is a professional. We need a professional administrator to handle that. Uh, Please, sir. Uh, and then uh, okay. to the second part, I want to invite the registrar to answer that. Okay. Um, Please, sir, you because you should answer that question, sir. Let me add this to this. Okay. Hello, sir. Go ahead, sir. Get, go ahead, yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Go ahead, sir. I'm thinking that uh, the IPMA can have a synergy with the institutions awarding degree certificates by the time they are graduate. So we can enforce those to be a member of IPMA. Is it not possible? Uh, okay, let me still again. I will invite the registrar. Something like that has been done, in the past, but it takes a lot of commitment. It takes a lot of commitment. That is why we are trying to get uh, that charter. Once we have this charter, and I know if our membership crosses over that mark, that challenge mark, mark, then of course we can do that collaboration. Permit me to invite the registrar to, or maybe the moderator to talk more on the on, on the membership yes, and uh, collaboration with the uh, RLN. So, All, right, All right, thank you, sir. Um, well, with um, the with respect to the issue of, um, let me take from the aspect of um, collaborating with. Uh, awarding um, institution. institution. Yes, in the okay. past, and just like um, Tato said, we have had um, something like that in the past. There was a time um, we had um, such synergy with um, ABU Zaria, and um, we have also been to um, Ajay Crowder University as well in um, Oyo. And yes, yes, yeah. um, so just like um, as as um, the facilitator said, yes, at times it's very difficult, um, but the Institute is working tirelessly on um, um, going into such uh, collaborations with so from the reputable institution of learning day and night. We are not relenting. We are not okay. relenting. And um, yes, thank you. That is that. Um, uh, is there any other question that okay, has not the, been the, Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, Hello, sir. 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 And for the benefit of those that okay. we, if, that we round up okay. with somebody before we round up the meeting. 
Thank you, sir. No problem. Sorry, sorry doctor. Sorry, doctor. Before, before the cap, before the cap of the summary of the thing, I still have one thing yes. to say, sir. Okay, yes. go ahead. Yes, sir. Like I was say, saying earlier, that is it is it going to be of benefit for me or useful in the situation? So you uh, and you said you do make mention that you've been to Ajayakwada, Atoyo, and some other places. See, you don't need to visit those too much. What you need to do, you visit, is not like the one that is coordinating us is our mother. Our mother and the coordinator is NCC at Abuja. You can go to NCC, talk to them, they, they will just issue a circular and pass it up everything. When you get to them, when you get familiar with them, when you talk to them, when you sit down and talk to them, I believe they will listen to you. Then they will just issue a circular. If the circular will just go across all the institutions, even to start with the federal institution. So from there, we know that, yes, this thing is going to be useful for us. Because as far as I'm concerned, I refuse to follow them to name, which is Nigeria uh, Clinical Management. I don't, Institute I don't like of Management. I don't like the way of the style. Yes, Institute of Management. I don't like the way of their styling. I must confess to you. So that is why I'm, I'm raising this something. You can bring to NCC at Abuja. You talk to them, and I believe they will issue a circular. So that circular will go along with you to be moving from one place to another. So that is just my only contribution, contribution to that effect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Thank you, sir, for that um, wonderful um, suggestion. Yes, I believe um, we are going to work yes. on it and see to that as well. Please, I have one more question. What? Okay. Is, uh, yes, please. What actually is the difference between uh, IPMA and CIPM? Both, I think, both are public. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, that is the Institute of uh, Snell, right? Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, IPMA is Institute of Professional Managers and Administrators. Oh. The name, no, you differentiate it. So the name alone is very unique. From, yes, the name alone, you can differentiate them. I think I just chatted management. It's not a uh, uh, we should break in what two body are uh, independent body. We work um, independently. It's not um, one depend on the other, but from the name alone, you can differentiate um, IPMA from uh, CIPM. So that is um, that. Thank you. Is that what time up? Thank you, sir. Uh, Please. Well, um, well, for someone who asked for the recap of uh, all we I see them are sending the kidneys to one now. Yes, we know. We know that but the recap so that we take that one as a fresh memory. We've been discussing this. Well, time is no longer on our side. We have exceeded the time um, set for this uh, workshop. What we what wow. is going to be put the, the yes, stop. everything we have been doing since is on um, recording. We are going to send a link for the recorded um, workshop for those whether you miss out due to okay. um Network. Network problem or coming late, you can catch up from there. Well, so, okay. 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 We will send it to. We will send the link to. It will be sent across to everyone. Please, you let's get the, um, you get the exercise notification. The link sent to all the <coughs> platform um, of um, the institute. Thank you. It will be. Uh, please, it I will don't be have it. Uh, uh, excuse me. I a contribution to make okay okay um good afternoon to everyone once more i want to sincerely appreciate the management team the uh, facilitators and all who has uh worked tirelessly to ensure that this workshop uh is successful uh please on the membership drive uh, visiting of institu institutions. I want to briefly say that the Russia has said it all. 
we what what I mean by that is that members need to uh, reach out to friends, relatives, associates to ensure that we reach the mark. When you reach the mark that have been given to the institute, that's the ten thousand uh, membership. It will now be easy for the mem for the institute to now proceed to national assembly, and then or when all that is done, it will now be easy for us to now go to uh, university commissions and whichever with other institutes that you can also uh, okay. uh, ask with okay. and uh, no, that's uh, ensure that okay. all this okay. is done. Okay. I want to uh, say that it is our collective responsibility to do this, to ensure that we help the management team so that our goal can be achieved. And in that achieved. Okay. Uh, way, okay. it will not be easy for the management right? team to now proceed to uh, an improvement of whatever uh, expectations of members. Thank you very much. I remain Chris, Chris Aja, FIP. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Good to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, on, um, I've come to the end of um, the program. Please, just pop in their name and email on um, the Zoom chat handles. It will be difficult to get it there. There is a number going around. Please. Yes. We're going to